This is a tutorial about different modeling methods in Revit. I'm using Revit 2013 and subtly different results uh, at the finish line when you do it in subtly different ways. So I'm going to do a tower that's 300 feet tall. It's going to have one long side that's 150 foot radius and the other side which is also 150 foot radius. And I'm going to make the bottom of the tower have these two short sides and the top of the tower have these two short sides. So there'll be a slight twist in one end of the uh, in the short ends of the tower. Those are going to look like this and the reason why I want to show you this is because depending upon how you model these towers you get slightly different results. You see I've created balconies ringing about the middle of the tower and in one case I've got a line created an inner line created by a mass floor and then offset and that offset yields a filleted corner here and in the other case it yields a chamfered corner, which we thought was kind of strange and wanted to explore why that might happen. So here I am in a blank file and I've got lying on the uh, level one some guidelines. And I'm going to make these from scratch and maybe people who don't quite know very much about the modeling environment can learn something from this. In my uh, elevations, I start down at level one and I go up about 300 feet to level 31. So what I'm going to do is go to my massing tab and I'm going to create an in-place mass and I'll call this one twist. So now I'm in my massing environment. I'm just going to duplicate the lines that I've got to create the bottom of this tower. And maybe I'll move these guys 300 feet down to get them off of my guidelines. So now I will fill it these guys. And then I'm going to create a set of lines for my top, which I'll hit my uh, set work plane button and make my work plane level 31. So you'll see it's kind of highlighting way up in space. When I grab these lines, you're not going to see them because they're kind of popping up way up at level 31 and again I'll fill it these guys and then move them over the top of the other guys. Now if I grab these two loops and hit create form I've got my my twisty tower mass. If I go to the top of this guy you'll see this is the shape I was trying to get and look, seen from the front looks like this. And when I finish mass, I can grab it, click mass floors, highlight all these guys, check them, and now I've got mass floors. My next step is to make a second mass and I'm going to once again go to my massing and do an in-place mass, and I'm going to call this one void. So now I'm in my mass tool, and again I'll copy. I'm actually going to copy the whole football shape. Grab these guys and move them down a bit. And I'll once again, well actually I don't really need to set up an upper line because I'm just going to extrude these. So I'll grab these guys, hit create form, and you can see I'm sort of getting a guide aligning me with the top of the other mass. So that's 300 feet. I've got a 300 foot football. Now instead of creating a, a, a form that's lofted between two curves, I'm actually going to cut out the ends with voids. So I'm going to go back to my guidelines and I'll pick the football and I'll pick the bottom of my void and fill it. And then once again, I'll set my level 31 as a work plane. And I'll again pick, pick, and pick. And you'll see they've popped up way, way up here. And I'll fill it those into a pure loop. Now, Revit doesn't like sometimes if you've got curvaceous forms and you put a void coplanar with that form. And I've tried this already and it didn't work. So I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is actually offset the two curved lines before I join them 
as a as a void form. So I pick those two curves and I click void form and you see now he's floating out in space, kind of doesn't know what to do. So I'll grab him and move him down into my mass. And of course nothing happens because you, as you know a void unless it's actually created in conjunction with a mass will not affect that mass unless you tell it to. There's a very good reason for that um, if you have voids doing various things within a form, uh, within the, ma the forms of a mass, you don't want them intermingling with other masses unintentionally. Uh, so if I created that void while it was touching this, it would actually create, it would cut through the mass. But since I did it separately, it won't. So I'll use my cut tool, grab the void, and grab the mass. And you see I've now got the twisty face. And now I'm going to do the same thing for the other side of the tower. So once again, uh, actually I'm starting at level 31, so I'll pick the top edges, fillet them, and then I'll set my plane down at the bottom, and I'll select these three lines, and again fillet them. And now I'll do my offset. One, two, three, four. And this time I'll actually do them in place. So I'll grab the two sets of model lines, the two loops, and I'll move them down. Coincident with my model, and then I'll create a void form. And you'll see that automatically cuts through because it's actually created there. Now I'm going to finish the mass, and you see it looks exactly like the other one and cut through it with mass levels. So here are my two identical towers made in a very different way. The one on the left is made with a twisted face. We've lofted between two, two loops. And the one on the right is created with, with voids in order to create the exact same geometry. Now I'm going to make the balconies. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to the Architecture tab, Floor, and I'm going to create an architectural floor just using a sort of generic 12-inch floor. Um, I'm set to level 17, which is fine. So I'm going to come in and... No, actually, you know what I want to do? I want to see my work plane. There we go. So now I can see my work plane. I'm going to zoom in a bit and I'm going to grab, if I can tab, and grab the chain of lines at floor 17. So now one clue you'll see is if I grab, and this is the twisted tower, if I grab one of these sketch lines you'll see that there isn't a little circle in the middle, meaning it's not a pure radius, it's more like a spline, which doesn't really make a lot of sense because this form is really cylindrical and the two ends are twisted. But now when I try to offset those guys by 10 feet, I get a very weird, well, actually this is interesting. I got a fillet and a chamfer on this side. Let me back up once more. And I'm going to do offset. I'm going to call it a copy because I want this to be a balcony looping around my building. Yeah, there's the chamfer. So that's kind of strange. So if I save this, come back out, and now if I do it one more time, I say floor, architectural, it knows I'm at 17. I'm going to turn on my show work plane, and then I'm going to zoom in, tab to select that mass floor lines. Now if I grab this, here's my circle, here's my 150 foot radius. So now I know I've got non-spline lines. And if I want to offset that as a copy, you see I get my filleted lines. So I don't really know why that occurs. Um, again, these broad faces on both towers are cylindrical, but I think that Revit uh, is understanding it somehow as a twisted face. And in the case of the twisted face, it's creating mass floor lines that are actually splines and not perfect radii. So that's something to be aware of. If you want to really do a uh, building shape and do balconies very quickly, uh, you might want to do it using the void method in order to sculpt a tower but I know it can be considerably difficult to use that all the time with certain shapes. 
So that's this tutorial, and I hope you enjoyed it.